Transitioning into life on the road can be a mixed bag of emotions. You might feel excitement, anxiety, fear, joy, and confusion all in one day. Downsizing your life into less than 100 square feet, it is a big deal. And making the move to travel in a van, whether part-time or full-time, takes both mental and physical preparations for a smooth transition. If you're used to moving, camping, and traveling around frequently, then transitioning into van might feel natural, but it certainly comes with its own unique set of circumstances. If you've got a 2,500 square foot home, on the other hand, with pets and kids, then packing up your life and moving into a tiny, tiny space will bring some challenges. But either way, my point is, it's a process, so be easy on yourself. In this module, we'll be discussing all things packing and prepping for life on the road from clothing to health insurance and everything in between. We'll get into how to pack, what to pack, and what to do with all your stuff, plus where to get mail, how to pay bills, and types of insurance for both you and your van. My goal is to set you up for success as much as possible so you're well equipped with the knowledge that will better prepare you for the road so you know what you need, where to go, and what to do in the early stages of van life. So let's get into it. When getting ready to make the transition to van life, minimizing your wardrobe is a good place to start. It'll be a big thing on your to-do list and having this task checked off will be a nice accomplishment. If you've been on an extended road trip or you have a pretty minimal wardrobe already, this might come easier for you. Otherwise, it's safe to assume you probably have more clothes than you'll need once you're living in the van for several months at a time. Even if you only plan to take your van out on short weekend trips, this lesson still applies. When I packed up my apartment and moved into my first Sprinter van back in 2016, I had no idea where to start with my wardrobe. The result was clothing overflowing out of every cabinet in the van and a lot of excess stuff that I never wore. My van felt cluttered and all of that space could have been used for something else that brought me more joy. The kind of lifestyle you'll be living will impact the sort of clothing you need to bring. If you anticipate spending a lot of time in urban areas, you might feel inclined to be more fashionable over functional. I understand that fashion brings some people a lot of joy, but in this lesson I'll be talking less about fa fashion and more about functional, comfortable, packable clothing that will make life on the road easier. Of course you might have a specific situation that requires you to have a specific type of clothing, like if you'll be working from the road for example. So the idea is that after reading these packing tips you'll be able to to discern what items you need to bring, including some special pieces if that's important for you. A good rule of thumb to follow is if you don't wear it a lot at home, you will probably not wear it on the road either. You're going to be spending a lot of time in the clothing you do bring, so it's important that you really love it and that it's comfortable. Otherwise, it will just end up taking space in your van and collecting dust. Another consideration is that you'll also want to pack for the specific activities you enjoy. So for example, if you hike or bike a lot, you're going to want to bring hiking and biking clothing. Same goes for any other activity you enjoy and plan on doing on the road. For fabrics, if you plan to spend a lot of time doing outdoor activities, then quick dry athletic style fabrics are great because you can give them a quick rinse and hand wash them in the sink if needed and they don't get super stinky after one use. It's okay and actually expected to wear things multiple times in between washes as this will reduce the amount of time you have to spend in the laundromat or hand washing your laundry. Generally, easy to clean, machine washable, and wrinkle free materials are best. And for me personally, dry cleaning items are a complete no-go. Undergarments, you'll want to pay attention to fabrics as well. Again, quick dry means you can easily hand wash them, which will buy you a few extra days in between trips to the laundromat. In addition to easy wash fabrics, I recommend keeping things simple by sticking to solid colors and simple patterns that coordinate with your other pieces so you can easily mix and match. That way you'll also be able to layer your items as the weather gets colder and you'll be prepared for all seasons. Think multi-purpose and versatile so you'll save space and time getting ready too. And finally, choose pieces that aren't too bulky. Your storage space will quickly seem even smaller once you start packing all of your stuff in. And it's especially noticeable with jackets and larger sweaters. Now that we've gone over some clothing basics for the road, how will you keep your clothing organized? The answer is compression style packing cubes. These help keep things organized, especially if you share a closet with your partner or your family members. So in here, we've been using packing cubes for a while and they're great for categorizing different types of clothing. So for example, you can have your tops in one, your bottoms in a second, and then your city, city style clothing in a third. Then you can have another one for your socks and underwear. The cube limits the amount of stuff you can squeeze in and so once it's full, that's it. 
and it also prevents you from having to dig through everything to find what you're looking for. Besides the packing cubes, I also keep one small duffel bag in our garage with seasonal wear, like warmer wintry, winter stuff, and I swap that out as the weather starts to turn. So now let's talk about shoes. <laughs> shoes take up a surprising amount of room. Just to give you an idea, in here we have a regular hamper for all of our shoes and the hamper is full. The shoes that you need depend on the type of activities you wanna do on the road. So if you're an avid hiker, a lot enough space for hiking boots and trail runners or a daily hiking shoe. If you're big into water sports, biking or climbing, make sure there's room for that footwear and those activities as well. I suggest keeping one pair of nicer sh shoes for the occasional night out when you might wanna dress up a little. And if you plan on showering at gyms or in campgrounds, you're gonna to wanna to bring a pair of basic flip-flops or sandals that you can wear in the shower. Because shoes take up so much room and aren't able to be compressed down like your clothing, it's especially important to only bring what you need and will actually wear. I've covered more details on clothing for van life in a blog post, which includes a breakdown of every single item of clothing I have in my van, and I'm gonna link down to that in the resources section. Now that we've covered clothing, let's move on to gear. So think back to the previous lesson where we discussed prioritizing the things that you need and want in your van. Hopefully you've been able to think through this and narrow it down a little and cross a few things off your list. As a reminder, when narrowing down the gear to bring along, I suggest focusing on your favorite activities and remember that typically the longer it takes to set something up, the less likely you'll use it regularly. Because you thought long and hard about this in the last module and are planning your build to accommodate your most important gear, packing up your van will be a lot easier. And you should have a place in mind already for the main gear items that you'll be bringing along. If you opted for a floor plan that doesn't accommodate bigger items like bikes or paddle boards, now is the time to figure out if you need any additional accessories like a roof rack or a bike rack or straps to bring anything else along that you might want. Organization is key to making living and traveling in a small space work. Keeping things orderly will reduce stress when you're trying to look for that one thing you need right now, like your gloves. I find it's best to group similar items or items that are used for a specific reason together. So you wanna designate specific compartments for certain items and stick to it. Unless of course you find a better place for those items after being in your van for a while, which will probably happen. Everything moves and shifts when you're driving. So I recommend storing all of your loose items in bins. We touched on this a little in the last module when we covered cabinetry and storage, but you're gonna to wanna to measure all the compartments in your van and find the perfect size bins that will fit into the different spaces. Uh, if you live near one, I personally love the container store and found their staff to be very helpful when I was shopping for my van. Uh, they actually let me bring the containers I was looking at out to the van to see if they fit in the different cabinets before I bought them. And they even suggested a few little hacks like a lazy Susan that I wouldn't have thought of without their help. I'm also a big fan of compression sacks and packing cubes, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, in my van, I have a specific drawer for my work stuff, Charlie's stuff goes in another, and then we have a bin for books and maps. My partner and I each have our own toiletry bins, and we also have a junk drawer for all of our mis miscellaneous stuff that accumulates, and every so often we try to clean that out. For our gear, we have two big plastic bins in the garage, and this year one of them had all of our camping and backpacking stuff in it, and the other had our pack rafting stuff and our life jackets. And while I've shared some examples, how you organize your van will be specific to whatever you bring and what works for your lifestyle. So be prepared to experiment, play a little bit of Tetris, but over time you'll find little ways to improve how your van is organized and you'll get it all dialed in. 